everybody. Welcome. Well, you caught me in the middle of a um, I'm actually try, trying to pack the kiln over there and as you can see I've got quite a number of different pots around here that I'm in the process of uh, glazing. These are some beer tankards which I've just dipped and I've got some smaller little wasted vases here which incidentally they do pack quite nicely alongside the bottled vases or bud vases you see the shape how they can mesh in together in the kiln and save space so it's a good idea when you're packing your kiln to think of the shapes so that you can sometimes um, mix and match the shapes together like that like what I just uh, explained you can you, you then can always get more pots into your kiln I always try to have some smaller, some smaller pieces, which I call kiln fillers, which one can find a small space for, a little place on a shelf just to put, you know, just get that extra pot in. It can make, make the, the value of the firing considerably more if you can find little places to put pots. So always a good idea, make some small kiln fillers to go into your kiln. Okay, but what am I going to do right now? Right now, this moment, I've just got to double dip quickly these jugs or pitchers. These are small pitchers. So let's just move the camera in here. This is not going to be a long drawn out clip, but you know, it's just life in the studio as per usual. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's what 99% of studio pottery is about, really. It's just you in the studio with the pots. And you've got to be in the studio to make it happen. Sometimes I like to think, oh, I wish I could just sort of sit here and just let maybe the pots will glaze themselves. <laughs> this is a, a glaze here that I'm using which is, I can give you the recipe, uh, if I can find the lid of it, yeah, is that the lid, yeah, this is, this is a clear glaze, and I'll show you what it comes out like, is, is like this, um, you see that pot when it's finished, it's going to come out when I put a brush decoration onto it, you see. But before I do that, of course, I've got to put the base glaze, which is this white glaze, which when it's finished comes out looking like that, which is kind of nice. It's, it's a sort of off-white. I like it. And, and then I've done a blue wash and then an iron oxide kind of flex down the side here. Okay, but the recipe for that is um, this will give you not a, not a huge amount, but it, it'll give you enough to glaze a number of things. So flint, four pounds, kaolin, two pounds, twelve ounces. Felspar, three pounds, 14 ounces. Whiting, one pound, 14 ounces. And talc, one pound, two ounces. If you double those quantities, obviously it'll give you for a larger amount. And I call this PB, or my dad used to call it PB, but I don't know what PB stands for, I never, you never told me. <laughs> so, now if you want to turn that into a, a cone, this is good incidentally for cone 10 in reduction, okay? But if you want to make, if you want to turn that into, like this, like this one's got inside it, with dust by the look of it, but I don't know if you can see, 
but here there's a glaze on the inside which is what, what I call celadon which is exactly the same glaze except with the addition of red iron oxide okay so if you add red iron oxide to that now I wish I could tell you how much um, just hang on a second I'll see if I can find out how much TB What did I say that was a oh, four pound? So uh Yeah uh So, yeah, for the for the smaller amount, iron oxide four ounces. Yeah. So for that recipe that I've just given you here, the smaller amount, okay, iron oxide four ounces, and that should do you. That'll give you a, that'll give you a nice celadon. That'll give you a nice celadon. Okay, so where are we? Well, that smaller amount has become an even smaller amount now because I've used it all up and it's just a little bit left. As you can see, I put it into a smaller bucket. So let's just check that we're in the picture. Good. Yeah, we seem to be in the picture. Okay. So I'm going to give this a stir, of course. It's important to stir your glazes. Keep them on the move. Now these, these pots I have, already, I have already dusted, okay? So what we're going to do is, I'm going to do these quite quickly. And I encourage you to learn this technique of double dipping, okay? So, let's go. So just take it down to the bottom and lift it halfway up and then jerk it, okay? Give it a little shake, lift out. You see, now that's glazed on the inside as well as the outside. Lift your finger up like that, let the drop run off the end of your finger onto the place where you held the, the picture. Down to the bottom, hold it there, one, two, three, and jerk it. And that's it. Lifting your finger up. Down to the bottom, and something you're going to have to practice, you see, the double dipping. Down to the bottom and up. Down to the bottom. Ooh, getting short of glaze now. Lift your finger up, let the glaze run off the end. Just touch that, that little drop and that's it, done. Okay, well, I'm gonna wash my hands.
So there it is, folks. Just a few little pots. You see me glaze and a glaze recipe. Now that's a, it's a good glazer. I recommend it. It's, it's good at high temperature, cone 9, cone 10, and, and you'll find you'll find if you want to do brushwork on top of that glaze, it, it works quite nicely as you, as you can see. You'll, <laughs> you'll also see that these particular tankards um, I think I think we have some on our website, so please go there, simonleachpottery.com. Buy yourself a tankard. Cheers. Don't forget, keep practicing. That's the secret. Bye bye now.